polling carried out for ITV News has shown two-thirds of young people have no trust in politics. The ITV Youth Tracker, conducted by Savanta, asked people aged 18 to 25 about their concerns and priorities ahead of the general election. The results showed 65% of 18 to 25-year-olds have no trust in politics, 59% say politicians don't care about them. Only 14% said they'll vote Conservative, compared to 61% who say they'll vote Labour. And that's compared to 27% of 18 to 24-year-olds who voted Conservative in the party's 1997 landslide defeat. Well, this special report from our political correspondent, Shihab Khan. Nothing in this country. Food is expensive, transport is expensive, everything, living is expensive. Like It's not hard to see why we're struggling for mental health when you think about COVID and the cost of living crisis, the climate crisis. I feel like a lot of people my age feel this same hopelessness. It is a generation who are disappointed, disillusioned, but not disengaged. They have huge issues of concern and they're not sure politicians can or will help them. I feel like, yeah, they just don't get it. We've done an opinion poll on 18 to 25 year olds and the data found that more than one third of young people had housing as their most important issue. Is there much affordable housing in Polly? I don't think so. Molly Taylor grew up in poverty and supported housing. She's been living independently, renting since she was 18, but now she's only just about getting by. I honestly don't know how I'm going to afford a house in my life. Literally on my payday, 20th of every month, my whole money is literally delegated to various different bills and rent straight away. She says if the rent goes up further, she'll really struggle. So it's um, my first kind of stable house in my life and I'm 24 years old, so I don't necessarily want to leave. I think current politicians is a very small minority that actually do you know, care about young people and our futures. Molly, like many of her peers, said mental health support was also an important issue. Our polling found that just over one third of young people also listed it as their most important concern. Jenny Tan sought help for an eating disorder in 2018, but didn't get the support she needed for years. She believes much more needs to be done to help young people with mental health conditions. I nearly died because no one would recognise that I was suffering. So I do think the government are failing on mental health and you're just not hearing about mental health. Instead, all the messages I'm getting are lose weight and count calories. Alongside both housing and mental health support, climate change too ranked highly among young people. 27% of those we asked listed it as one of their priority issues. Tom Wilson has been involved in climate activism since he was at school. If sea levels rise, where he lives in Cornwall, will become an island. Sometimes it hits quite hard and you, you get this sort of gut-wrenching feeling. He wants politicians to take the impacts of climate change more seriously. If this floods and they're going to have to build massive sea defences, like what's that going to cost? So we need the investment now to prevent that later cost, which my generation will have to bear. You know, it's, it, it's not, why, why should my generation have to pay that huge cost and bear that cost when we could be fighting it now? <laughs> With a lot of issues on young people's minds here at the University of Reading, students told us how they feel about their future and how it compares to previous generations. I think we live in a completely different world. Um, and it's constantly changing at a really unprecedented rate. I think the basics in life, such as rent and housing, food, gas, electricity, water bills, they're a lot more expensive than they used to be. Do you think politicians care about young people? No. <laughs> no. no. For me to say that. I think there's, for one, it's an aspect of being removed from us. Our age cohort, particularly 18 to 25 year olds, we've consistently kind of been ignored in a way. Even if you really want to care, if you don't have the background, it's difficult to. Mm. And they are all voters. So with an election coming, what do they think about Rishi Sunak, the man running the country? I don't think he understands. I mean, from my facial expression, do I need to say more? <laughs> but they're also not huge fans of Keir Starmer either. I think he just genuinely needs to improve. He seems a bit like he jumps from side to side a little bit. So, you know, he 
he's a classic politician in a way. It's not exactly a good omen when in an election year, young people up and down the country have such significant concerns and seem to have little faith that those in power can actually help. Mm, she how disillusioned it really is the word, isn't it? I mean, how concerning is this uh, for those who are running the country? Yeah, it, it's not exactly good news when young people are, as you say, mm. so disillusioned. Nearly all of them that we spoke to point out the fact that they've all lived through what is supposed to be once in a lifetime, once in a generation issues repeatedly. So the global financial crisis, the pandemic, the war in Ukraine, it seems to keep happening and it's made things very difficult for them. A lot of them spoke about how difficult they think it will be for them to buy a house, especially when they compare it to their parents and their grandparents' generations. But the big thing here is they don't seem to have a significant amount of faith that politicians are working for them or doing anything that's going to help them. <clears throat> excuse me, in the, in the long run. And that's, that's the worry here. As you pointed out, the big concern here is the big fall in support for the Conservative Party, and it's got lower than it was in 1997 when there was that big landslide victory for the Labour Party. That will be a concern. But that's not because of a huge amount of support or enthusiasm for Keir Starmer. As you saw in that report, they weren't exactly bouncing off the walls at joy at the thought of Keir Starmer getting into office. So it's, it's bleak, yeah. to say the least. Yeah, all right. Well, Shehab, thank you.